Welcome back. Happy Wednesday. Hope everyone's having a good day as I am. We've got a lot to cover in today's episode, including more shadiness from Avalanche. But this time, a new entity has been dragged into the mix, but one part of the story still isn't really adding up. We'll get to that later. Plus, the Wall Street Journal puts out a hit piece on Tether and some wild happenings on crypto Twitter yesterday. So don't forget to like the subscribe button, follow me on Twitter at Ben Crypto Show. And before we begin, let me tell you a little bit more about the sponsor of today's episode. Crypto trades 24 hours a day, seven days a week on hundreds of exchanges all around the world. It's just impossible to keep up with all the coins you're interested in all the time. That's why trading bots have come into popularity lately. They do the trading for you, all the while letting you take advantage of increases in volatility and price rises while you don't have to sit in front of a computer all day long. And that brings me to my sponsor for the day, Bitsgap. Bitsgap is a reliable trading bot that connects to 15 or so of the top exchanges. There's no transaction fees, no deposits, no withdrawals, meaning the coins just stay on the exchange for which you've connected to Bitsgap, and then Bitsgap does the trading for you. Bitsgap can handle 100,000 transactions per month, and by comparison purposes, that's 30% of the total transaction volume that Binance can handle. At the bottom, there's a link for a 7-day pro trial for Bitsgap. I'll get into more of that later. So first, you want to go to bitsgap.com, sign up here. From here, you'll go to the app. This is what it looks like. It's pretty easy to navigate the interface. If it's your first time, you probably want to click on My Exchanges in the top left. Here's where you'll connect it to an exchange. I chose Binance US. You click Add New Exchange. It's a pull-down menu. Choose an exchange that you already have an account on and that you have money in. After you choose your exchange, then you'll add the API key, the secret key. You get that from the API key section of the exchange. Click Connect, and then you're good to go. So you have to hook it up to an exchange. Then you probably go back to the bot section here. You would probably click Start New Bot right here. And here are the bot strategies that Bitsgap runs. And then the two most basic ones are SBOT and Classic. SBOT is if you're expecting horizontal flat price action. Classic is if you're expecting upward bullish price action. So about a week ago, I chose to run the SBOT one. So you click on that. Then you first thing you do, you change the grid levels. It would tell you the minimum investment you need in USDT or whatever in the exchange. Then you click Run. So again, I ran mine, so I can't click run, but it does allow you to backtest any strategy. So let's see how the SBOT strategy would have done previously. So over the last three days, if you ran the spot, it would have performed 0.3% up, which is good because the market nuked in the last three days. Last seven days, it would have gone up almost 1%. Again, the market nuked over the last week, so that's pretty good. 30 days, it would have gone up almost 4%. But enough of the back testing. Let's see how my bot has actually been doing in the seven days that I've been running it. So you go down here, you click right here, and here we go. So the bot has essentially broken even the last week. It's down 0.05%, so essentially perfectly flat price action. But that's good, because again, the market has nuked in the last week. So if you go to benchmarks, since the exact moment I started running this bot, BTC is down almost 9%. ETH is down almost 10%. And again, my bot is essentially flat. So it's definitely outperforming the market here. And as mentioned, the link for a 7-day free trial with Bitsgap is in the description area right down here in the video. And then I'm going to put it in the comments area right here. So please use the referral link that helps out the channel. And you get a 7-day trial, free trial of Bitsgap Pro. And also, before I forget, uh, tomorrow I'll be doing another altcoin deep dive video, a new altcoin that's been kind of hot, getting on everyone's radar lately, so look out for that. Then I'll be doing another one-off deep dive video on Friday. Look out for that, too. Today is going to be a regular news day. Let's get into it. So the cover story for the, for the day, Avalanche. Now, for a while, Avalanche was the one blockchain in the top 15, 20 that had no drama whatsoever. They had no major hacks. They had no lawsuits against them that I'm aware of. They had no SEC investigations into them that I'm aware of. That all changed instantly this week. So I brought you this story a couple days ago to start. So the story goes, the, in, the head lawyer, the in-house legal counsel for Avalanche, he was... In a meeting, having drinks, and then into a meeting with a uh, venture capitalist from Silicon Valley, we'll get into in a second, and the Avalanche lawyer was caught on tape saying that he is only paid the token supply, he owns 1% of the total Avalanche token supply, part of his job is to do the regular legal work for Avalanche, but it is also to essentially, he said, sue competitors, 
He had a lawsuit against Binance US. He had a lawsuit against Solana. And he seemed to insinuate on this taped conversation that Avalanche hired him to not just do the legal work, but to sue the competitors to help Avalanche gain market share. So the story has gotten even weirder. So that lawyer that was caught on tape, now he's saying that he was drunk the entire meeting. And the guy he had the meeting with, this venture capital, so get to in a sec, essentially plied him with alcohol and then kind of, you know, guided the conversation in certain directions. So this lawyer, the avalanche lawyer would say certain things. And do, 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 he, the avalanche lawyer said it was uh, like deceiving and entrapping. Um, what else did he say here? Do, 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 do. He also said that the conversations represented only a snippet. I guess they were talking for hours and hours over the course of the evening, and the conversations that were made public were only a couple minutes or less. And then he's saying, the avalanche lawyer is saying that this happened because the guy he had a meeting with, this venture capitalist, the avalanche lawyer believes the venture capitalist works for, has an affiliation with Definity. Definity is a rival blockchain of Avalanche, and this avalanche lawyer has sued Definity in the past. So that's why he believed it was sort of a setup like that. The avalanche lawyer went on to say, so he initially met the avalanche team. They shared a co-working space together in 2019. So essentially, as opposed to the avalanche team kind of putting out a job description, looking for a head legal counsel person with 10 years of experience, hired him that way. They just kind of hired him through sort of becoming friends at a co-working facility and sort of kind of this head lawyer guy sounds a little bit more like a founding team member, you know, executive as opposed to just strict, strictly the in-house legal counsel. This is what the Avalanche lawyer looks like. His name is Kyle Roach. Looks like a young guy, early, mid-30s. This is a snippet from the dinner where the tape-recorded conversation happened. And here's the guy that he had the meeting, the drinks, and the meeting with. So Kristen Auger Hansen. He is a Norwegian-born venture capitalist. That's what he looks like. This does not look like somebody you want to mess with here. Very intimidated-looking guy. He's about 60. He's from Norway. I guess he's in the Silicon Valley scene right now. He is worth $2.5 billion, or he was in 2005. He's listed as an internet entrepreneur in BC. So he's just kind of a Silicon Valley heavyweight. Um, magazine profiles of him in the past have described him as a cold-hearted Gordon Gecko type who will just kind of screw over his opponents who, you know, in any way possible. Uh, Iger Hansen was quoted as telling the Telegraph newspaper in 2017, if people screw with me, I will screw with them 10 times harder. I'm a street fighter. I'm a crazy mother effer. So yeah, this guy, if you get on his bad side, he, he it's not good, basically. It's, it's not good. And this guy, Kyle Roach, appears that he got on his bad side. But the question I have is, I couldn't find any affiliation that this guy, the VC guy, the Norwegian guy, actually worked for Definity or has any affiliation with them, whether he invested with the company or anything. I just couldn't find anything online about that. And it was the Avalanche team who has asserted this, that the Norwegian entrepreneur is a Definity fixer and Obviously, then he would not like the Avalanche lawyer because the Avalanche lawyer did sue Definity last year in addition to suing Solana and Binance US. So this Avalanche lawyer guy is sort of an instigator, as I mentioned. He just sues a lot of entities in the space. None of these lawsuits appear to go anywhere. So he's just kind of an instigator. So I, I think this looks a little more like just the Norwegian guy just doesn't like this guy here. The Norwegian guy is a big tech guy. He's probably invested in a ton of companies in the space. He's just not going to like a guy like this who just creates a lot of seemingly frivolous lawsuits, um, in my opinion. I, so I think it's basically he just didn't like the guy as opposed to him specifically representing Definity and kind of getting back at him for that. As he said in his own words, the Norwegian guy, if people screw with him, he will screw with him ten times harder. That's exactly what he said in his own words. So that appears to be what happened here. The Norwegian guy says he does not work for... Uh, Definity or the founder of Definity, so I think that's pretty accurate. I think he just didn't like him. Um, the Norwegian guy is all saying he has absolutely no idea how the tape-recorded conversation came out, was made public through the website CryptoLeaks. <laughs> no comment on that, let's just say. 
But I would have to agree with the Norwegian guy that, um, yeah, this avalanche lawyer does sound like a bit of an instigator, and I think the Norwegian guy just doesn't like him, and that's what sort of led to this incident here. But yeah, again, it's just an example. Even crypto, even when the prices are down, there's just no shortage of drama, entertaining stories. Never a more than two-week period goes by where you don't hear something like that. Next story of the day. So Wall Street Journal put out a piece on Tether. As I mentioned for Wall Street Journal, they're not really that big on crypto, which is sort of unusual because other New York publications like Bloomberg and Forbes are huge on crypto. And I mean, they have to be. The crypto articles account for a large portion of their uh, reader base, I'd have to imagine. Um, but the journal is just, they are a no-go. They're old school, founded in the 1880s. So the piece the other day they put out, it's just kind of the usual stuff. No one knows what the reserves are backed by. A, an audit hasn't really happened. Tether has audited their stud, their um, reserves, but it was with a three to five person auditing company in the Cayman Islands. No one was really sure how official that audit was. So then I guess Tether has switched to BDO Italia, which I guess is the top five audit firm in Italy or Europe. So I guess they're very well known there, but it's a little unclear whether the audit has actually happened yet or if Tether has just signed on with BDO Italia for BDO Italia to do the audits. A little unclear there. Do, 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 do. You know, they also said that they make points that, you know, Tether can be shorted, but I, there's no one-to-one -one redemption mechanism that I know of with Tether. Um, if there is one, I don't know about it, so I don't really know how the shorting thing would work if it wouldn't spit out of control since there's no one-to-one -one redemption mechanism. But anyways, the bigger picture with this here, it, it just comes down to money with Tether. Look here, I mean, Tether market cap, $67 billion, even in the bear market, $67 billion. They are reported to have around 13 total employees. The company has been reported to have the highest market cap to employee ratio of any company in the history of the world, which sounds pretty accurate to me. $67 billion market cap, 13 employees. So they are just making a lot of money. So in any industry, when you have the unicorn like this or or a big exchange like, you know, finance, something like that. It's just, there's always going to be tons of eyes on them, tons of prying eyes. There's always going to be these investigations, particularly when a company is private the way Tether is. But I think this just comes down to money and top dog status. Let's go on the crypto Twitter beat, changing subjects significantly. If you're not on crypto Twitter, this was the entertainment for uh, the day yesterday. This picture was posted of Vitalik. Uh, bulging through his pants, as you can see here. Yeah, this stuff doesn't really make the media articles, obviously. So if you're not on crypto Twitter, you would not even know that this was the article here. I must have seen this 200 times. Mark Davis posted it a full three times yesterday. Maybe just one post was okay, but, you know, Mark, Mark, he was uh, <laughs> deemed it a three-post uh, tweet there. You shall see. Stay on a crypto Twitter, but change it to a totally new topic. So I mentioned, so... See, Miss Teen Crypto, this girl's really getting a lot of good interviews here. I'm impressed. So CZ, head of Binance, he interviewed on her show yesterday. I guess that's probably, Binance is probably trying to kind of break into the college market a little bit. The college market in the U.S. is actually kind of untapped, surprisingly. You'd think college kids would be really into crypto. I think they just have too much studying and football games and partying. I, crypto, they're probably interested in, but it sort of falls by the wayside. So Binance looks like they're making a push into the college market. And she, Team Crypto, I guess she's 18 or 19. She's the face of the lone face of the college market. I don't know any other influencers who are kind of sort of representing that market the way she does. But I mean, look at these speakers she's had. So she had CZ, she had Dan Held, huge name. Uh, he works for Kraken. He's got 600,000 Twitter uh, followers. She had Leia Helburn. She had BitBoy last week. I mean, the girl's just she's got a good management team there. She's just landing the big interviews. <clears throat> good for her. Anyways, that's it for today. Hope everyone enjoyed the episode. Follow me on Twitter at Crypto Show. Hit the like and subscribe button here. Be back with an altcoin deep dive tomorrow. Video I've been prepping for a little bit. Very excited about it. Check that one out. And then another deep dive video on Friday. See everyone then. Catch you later. Ben Crypto signing out.